Mr. Duff, the science buff. Mr. Duff, the science buff. Duff, 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 duff. Mr. Duff, the science buff. Science rules. Mr. Duff, the science buff. You know shot is a public Mr. Duff, the science buff. There's hydrogen and helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon everywhere. Come in. Mr. Duff, hey, I'm Jojo. This is my son, Zach. Hi, Jojo, Zach. Let's Welcome. Meet. The secretary said we could pop in and say hello. No problem. Zach here is your biggest fan. Duff, Duff, Duff. Mr. Duff, you're way better than that than I do. <laughs> hey, I hope we're not interrupting anything. No, not at all. I was just putting up this beautiful periodic table of elements. Oh, I thought I heard some singing. Oh, I was singing the periodic table song. Oh. Cool shirt, Mr. Duff. It's a periodic table shirt. I like that bulletin board border. Oh, this bulletin board border? Mm -hmm. It's a periodic table border, of course. Oh, and that table, that table is really interesting. It's a periodic table table. What is this? Oh, that is a wooden periodic table plaque. Cool. Huh. Hey, Zach, I got a joke for you. Huh. What do you do to dead elements? What? You bury him! <laughs> B.A. bury him, get it? Oh, Mr. Duff, I think you need a vacation. Oh, I take them. Periodically. Vacation! Finally vacation! Oh, sorry. This is Mr. Duff the Science Buff. I'm up here in the mountains about to film Mountain Science with Mr. Duff the Science Buff. And don't forget, who needs Bill Nye the Science Guy when you got Mr. Duff the Science Buff? This is the Tallulah Gorge. It was formed by the Tallulah River. Some of those cliffs are a thousand feet high. This a gorge was formed by the Tallulah River. It, the Tallulah River, with uh, weathering and erosion, took away the quartzite over millions of years. And those sediments that's taken away end up on the Atlantic Ocean off of Savannah, Georgia, about 300 miles away. Beautiful gorge caused by weathering and erosion of the Tallulah River. See all these water molecules? They're flowing down this river and make, eroding away and making this rock smooth. You remember water, H2O, hydrogen and oxygen forming a compound we know as water? This river I'm on is called the Tuckuskegee. That means the Cherokee Turtle Place and locals call it Tuck. This river here, with the sediments, flows into the Tennessee River. And the Tennessee River flows into the Ohio River. The Ohio River flows into the Mississippi and the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico. These sediments that are being eroded in the Tuck end up on a marsh 650 miles away in Louisiana. They call that deposition. What force is making this H2O go all the way end up 650 miles away in the Gulf of Mexico? It's gravity. The tuck is at about 2,000 feet up in the North Carolina mountains, so it's downhill all the way. Do you consider that a terrain, Robert? Is the, this river losing ground? I'm in the Smoky Mountains in North Carolina. These mountains are millions of years old. They were formed by erosion. They're older mountains. The weathering and erosion smoothed them out. The highest peaks of these mountains, the Smokies in North Carolina, are around 6,000 feet high. Uh, compare that to the Rocky Mountains. Those are newer mountains. They're jagged. They haven't had as much erosion. A lot of those peaks are 14,000 feet high. You wanna hear a joke? What's the laziest mountain? Mount Everest? Mr. Duff, the science buff here, up in the Great Smoky Mountains in North Carolina. I'm over a mile above sea level. You remember how long a mile is? That's 5,280 feet. And you see here, I'm at 5,560 feet. The air up here is kind of thin. I'm up in the top of the troposphere. The troposphere is where most of the weather occurs around the world. You go up to 6,000 feet, that's called the stratosphere. 
The air is very thin up here. If you try to run, it's really hard on your respiratory system to get enough oxygen because there's fewer molecules. There's also cold up here. It gets colder because of the lack of uh, air pressure. Hey, why don't mountains get sick? They wear snow caps. Hello, I'm high up in the North Carolina mountains, out in the woods in a forest. This is what they call a spruce fir forest. It's made up of mainly trees that are red spruce and Fraser fir. They're both interesting trees. They are evergreen and they're conifers. That means evergreen means they keep their leaves year round. And the conifer means they are cone bearing. They have babies with pine cones. It's a very interesting ecosystem here filled with rocks and plants and trees and animals. It's also a habitat or home to many critters. Like for example, I understand there's 63 different types of birds up here. There's bobcats and there's bear and there's deer and there's raccoon. Hey, what's the poorest plant in the forest? It's a vine because it can't support itself. <laughs> Let's check out some plants. See this plant? The leaves, it takes in sunlight and carbon dioxide and helps with photosynthesis. Ever think about how things move around in a plant? Well, they have things like veins called xylem and phloem. Phloem transports stuff from the leaves throughout the plant. Xylem is like the up elevator. It takes stuff from the ground and takes those nutrients and brings it up into the plant. Xylem and phloem. Hey, can you spell those? You ready for some tree jokes? Isn't this tremendous? <laughs> what kind of tree has hands? A palm tree. Why do trees make the worst enemies? Because they're best at throwing shade. Hey, Mr. Duff here, playing in a stream in the North Carolina mountains. Look at that little waterfall back there. You notice how it's going downhill? Where's all this H2O going? Hey, look at this mineral quartz. This is quartz. Isn't that beautiful? Look how big that thing is. Big piece of quartz in the mountains of North Carolina. A yellow brick. Notice the edges. No weather and erosion has made it smooth. I wonder if there's a yellow brick road around here. Mr. Duck here, kayaking down the tuck, going over some rapids. Hey, let's talk about some laws of motion. You ever heard of Newtonian physics? Well, Newton had this first law that said, it's law of inertia. Um, an object at rest wants to stay at rest. An object in motion wants to stay in motion. So right now, I'm not moving. What forces are working on me? The buoyancy of the water is pushing up on me, and gravity is pulling down on me. So if I'm not moving, those forces are balanced. How about Newton's third law? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I were to push the paddle this way, the kayak goes that way. Hey, I'm almost out of money. Think I can stop along a riverbank? Adios, dynamos! Excuse me, are you Mr. Duff the science buff? Yes, I am. I have a message from Bill Nye. Oh!